water. Er, water. Ah, no. <laughs> Do you think we'll really find Airbenders? You want me to be like you, or totally honest? Are you saying I'm a liar? I'm saying you're an optimist. Yeah. So this is a conversation going back to the fortune teller thing. Optimist versus realist. That's how they just framed that. And those qualities exist as both flaws and weaknesses for both of them. I didn't talk about this, but I was wondering about this during the episode with Bado. Bado gave Sokka the mark of the wise, Katara the mark of the brave, and he gave Aang the mark of the trusted. I was wondering if the show writers did that to be a little bit more explicit about the way they were characterizing the three of them, but it doesn't really seem to fit too well because I don't think that Katara is necessarily more brave, and I don't think that Aang is necessarily more trustworthy. Couldn't draw a conclusion, so you can let me know what you guys think. Guys, look at this! They really are airbenders! You can tell by the way they move. They're not airbending. What is it, like, just machinery? When rivals become friends. We're not so different after all. Oh, wow. Just rubbing it in. Wait until you see the other stuff my dad designed. Desecration of the air temple? This is a sacred temple! My people became refugees after a terrible flood. We're just in the process of improving upon what's already here. And after all, isn't that what nature does? It's really interesting to me that he made that comment about how he's just doing what nature is already doing. In our minds, we have this kind of dichotomy between man-made things and natural things. I think if you really kind of zoom out a little bit and look at it more objectively, there really isn't that much of a distinction. We are a byproduct of nature. and things that we create are therefore in some sense natural. And I know maybe the counter argument to that or the reason why people might get a little bit upset about that is because it sometimes seems like the acts of humans often do damage to other natural things like polluting the oceans and things like that. But you have to kind of wonder, right? Everything in the universe is probably subject to the same laws or same principles. And it seems like one of those major principles is evolution. And I don't mean that in a biological sense. I mean it in a broader sense where things that, that can't self-perpetuate tend to not stick around and things that do self-perpetuate tend to self-perpetuate and therefore are around longer. And one of the aspects of that is experimentation, exploring many different routes and then selecting for the best route. But you never really know what the net effect will be, what's going to end up winning over time. Maybe what humans are making and humans are building is just part of a healthy, organic, natural process of experimentation towards something that is sustainable. Is there really that much of a distinction between the natural law that Aang and, and other airbenders are able to manipulate? and the technology this guy makes, they're both things that they have been able to do using the faculties they were born with or that they were given by their environment. Does that make sense? I feel like that was a very kind of abstract thing for this, but let me add that I also sympathize with Aang. This is his home and his temple, and it's another reminder that he's lost everything. It's also a slap in the face to his ideals and everything he holds, he holds as valuable. It's really hard to stomach when you feel someone is disrespecting your whole essence. Wait till you see my finger safe knife sharpener. Only took me three tries to get it right. That's a guy who's dedicated to his craft. It's just like the one in the other air temple. This is the last part of the temple that's the same as it was. I wanted to stay that way. The air temple obviously means something great to Aang, and that's important and that's special. But he already has that. He doesn't actually need the air temple. I think the idea of clinging to the actual physical thing is a sort of denial about the transience of the world. There's nothing that's going to stop this air temple from being destroyed. Well, that's just something that you have to accept. All the material things he has, all the things you own, you're not going to have them forever. Over the time I've spent traveling, I've kind of become a minimalist out of necessity. You realize, you know, that you don't really miss anything. When you're in the process of getting rid of things, you feel like, oh no, I'm gonna want this later. And you might have a moment where you're like, I wish I had thrown that out. But then that moment's gone and you live, you move on with your life, but it doesn't matter. Famous line from Fight Club that probably everybody knows where uh, the things you own end up owning you is kind of true. I know this isn't really about material possessions, but I think there's some, there's some link there. It's a recurring idea and things we've been talking about where people confuse the source for the signal. Aang's love of the airbenders and his his sadness about them being gone, it really has very little to do with the actual physical space in this temple. And there's really nothing he can do to delay the inevitability that the world's going to change. People have a fear of change. People have a, and technology is a big symbol of change. And so I think that's that's all factoring in for Aang here. I'm feeling extra rambly today. It's filled to the brim with natural gas. Nearly blew myself and the whole place even more sky high. Thought my eyebrows would never grow back. So that's why his eyebrows were like that, I was wondering. So this place is an explosion waiting to happen. Until I figure out how to locate something I can't see, hear, smell, or touch. Hmm, a bird? Are you ready? No. <laughs> Mark of courage. Just make sure you keep your mouth closed so you don't swallow a bug. Solid advice. If you want to see what's in that room, I'd be happy to open the door for you. Nice, he was able to do it by himself. In the fire temple, everyone had to do it together. If we 
put a whole mess of rotten eggs in the cellar where the gas seeps up, the gas will mix with the smell of rotten eggs. You're a genius! Hey, there you go, Sokka's intellect. It's good to be useful. We talked about, like, arguing for argument's sake. Sokka's completely useless and annoying in those situations, but you put him with a scientist and, like, he's the man. Find your role. Find your context. You're making weapons for the Fire Nation! Oh. You've been a bad boy, Mr. No Eyebrows. Fire Nation soldiers found our settlement. They were going to destroy everything. You must understand. I did this for you. That's a terrible thing to say. He doesn't want to hear that. He doesn't want to hear it's his fault. I don't think it's that big a deal he was making weapons for the Fire Nation. I mean, pretty much everybody would do the same thing in his situation. What I think is cowardly about it is that he hid this until he was found out. That makes it seem like he's complicit. Is there a problem? Oops. The deal's off. Get out of here! Uh, then the destruction of this temple will be on your head. I want to help. Good, some nice redemption for this guy. It's really easy to criticize people in this situation when they end up helping the enemy or people they know are wrong. But I think in reality, the vast, vast majority of people would do exactly the same to save their own necks. It's really, really rare that somebody would actually be willing to have their home burned for what they believe is right. I think a lot of times when you see people taking a very strong ideological stance, it usually corresponds pretty closely to what their immediate community expects of them. It's really difficult to go against the crowd. It's very scary. And for good reason, because they will just destroy you. I mean, you don't agree with the Fire Nation? Then that's it, you're just burned. Sorry. So I don't find this guy unsympathetic. Not everyone can take that onto their shoulders. This boy's a genius. How do you keep a lid on hot air? Ugh, if only we knew. <laughs> that wasn't very nice. Poor Sokka. Interesting. It's like a real army skirmish, army conflict. Nice. Well, they're dead. Has anyone ever done a body count for Aang? <laughs> um, I wonder how the natural gas is going to come into play here. can't believe I'm actually watching, like, aerial bombings happening in the show. Oh, wow. Yeah, He's a beast. I guess the guitar do something? Nice. She's getting better herself. Nice tag team action. This dude just gets more and more beastly himself. Everyone's getting more powerful. We're out of bombs. Natural gas. You smell that? Run eggs. Damn. Who has the highest skill count? I wonder. <laughs> I'm really glad you guys all live here now. Maybe you weren't born here, but you found this empty shell and made it your home. As long as we've got the skies, we'll have the Fire Nation on the run. This defeat is the gateway to many victories. Oh, they claimed the air balloon thing? Now they have the air. I'm glad it resolved that way for Aang. Although it wasn't too explicit, I think that part of that was like a process of him letting go. I guess he kind of accepted that the shape of things changed, but what's important stays the same. You just have to kind of go with the flow. Next up is the water bending master. Ooh, is it gonna be another master people one? Please. I already feel at peace. We found the water tribe. This isn't some little earth village we can just march into. The landscape itself is an icy fortress. That's true. How do you attack the water tribe on water? This place is beautiful. Oh yeah, Sokka hasn't had any love interest yet. Why do I get so excited about love interest in this show? Finally, something Uncle Iroh is not good at. But he has a very Johnny Cash quality. <laughs> it's not unpleasant. Now, Master Paku and his students will perform. That was nice. Hi there. Sokka, Southern Water Tribe. Very nice to meet you. Let's see Sokka's maximum aloofness at work. This should be good. So, uh... How do they end up sitting next to each other? It seems like an oversight by the planning committee. I'm thinking maybe we could do an activity together? Do an activity? Yeah, can't say I'm surprised. Just because you're destined to save the world, don't expect any special treatment. Mm. Yes, sir. So far, this guy doesn't have the, the, the oomph of John John. I am taking your crew. I can't have you getting in my way again. Does he know about that? The Blue Spirit episode? Or is there something else? Yeah, yeah. Well, you just figured it out. I didn't know you were skilled with broadswords, Prince Zuko. Have you heard of the Blue Spirit, General Iroh? Just rumors. He knows. Come on. General Iroh, the offer to join my mission still stands if you change your mind. 
that one line added a lot because it shows that Jao respects Uncle Iroh, but also reminds us of Iroh's principles to stick with Zuko. You didn't tell me your friend was a girl. In our tribe, oh no, come on, dude. Women to learn water bending. <sighs> but John John could kick his ass. I don't want to heal, I want to fight. But our tribe has customs. Then I won't learn from you. Well, have fun teaching yourself. Wait. Interesting. Aang didn't mean that. You can't risk your training for me. That was pretty big of Katara putting aside the insult of that to do what she thinks is best for Aang. How about that picnic last night? Yeah, real aloof. Well, it wasn't as much fun after you left. So, right. I'm still hoping we can see more of each other. Do an activity? At a place for some time. I'd love to. That's pretty I'm good. Sure. Maybe I owe Saga an apology. That was awkward in the right kind of way. It was charming awkward. It wasn't disgusting awkward. I recognize this carving. You're the spitting image of Kana. Your grandmother had an arranged marriage with a young waterbender. She left without saying goodbye. Opening up some mystery boxes for Katara's family. Are those the pirates that we saw before? They are, right? Uncle, is that you? Nope, it's not. I mean, if anyone can handle that. I was gonna say a firebender could handle that, but I guess not. I carved it myself. It's a bear. Actually, it's supposed to be a fish. I made a mistake. I shouldn't have asked you to come here. Because your carving suck. One minute she wants to go out with me, and the next she's telling me to get lost. Princess is on my right. I can relate. Why don't you just teach her, Aang? Why didn't oh, yeah. I think of that? Sokka, man. He's smart. Everyone's happy. I'm not happy. But you're never happy. Come on, Aang. <laughs> I mean, she's kind of right. I got it! That was amazing! That wasn't no, me. No, that wasn't her. You have disrespected me, my teachings, and my entire culture. It's strange to think about how far does respecting culture go? This is something you come across a lot while, tra while living abroad. It's easy to notice it when people aren't doing that at all. Like, they will accept nothing that's different. It's hard to do it correctly because if you fight for what you believe is right, you also end up being culturally insensitive. I think everyone can kind of understand that there is a line. Like, there, there probably is some kind of objective truth to what is functional somewhere, but it's difficult as hell to figure out where that line is and how to act on it. So like, you know, for basically everyone watching this, it's like, dude, like just teach Katara, right? It also is true that Aang disrespected him. If you're gonna make a choice like that, then, you know, make it, but at least be kind of open-eyed about it. Realize that there was some deception involved there, you know? I'm waiting, little girl. He's kind of a jerk though. I'll be outside if you're man enough to fight me. Wow, she just threw down that challenge like it was nothing. The Fire Lord will not be pleased when he learns who was responsible. Zuko's smart. He's laying low. So, you decided to show up? I'm really curious to see how this will be resolved. It's a tough one. You want to learn to fight so bad? Study closely. Don't worry, I'm not going to hurt you. Oh, she's just trying to punch him. <laughs> Didn't expect that. What, should I kill him? You are an excellent waterbender. Yeah. But you still won't teach me, will you? No. This is great. I'm loving this water and ice action. Oh, is he somehow related to her grand? Oh, is he the is he the one who was engaged to her grandmother? This is my necklace. My grand grand was supposed to marry you. Our plan is working perfectly. Yeah. Stay hidden until we get to the North Pole, and the Avatar will be yours. I just want you to know, I think you're beautiful. You don't have to say anything. I'll see you around, okay? Aloofness. Maximum aloofness. Oh, damn! I'm engaged. There's so much drama in this episode. Hey, Katara! What do you think you're doing? It's past sunrise. You're late. It does feel a little bit convenient to me that they changed the law for her. I guess the good thing about it was that she earned it. There's something to be said about stubbornness and will forcing the universe to be the way you want it to be. In some ways, people are like water. You know, they're, they're going to fill in whatever space is created by others. It's very rare for people to actually create space, you know, create the shape of things. So if you're someone who's just super stubborn about a particular issue and are unmovable, people who are kind of on the fence, they're just going to come to your side out of convenience or out of fear or something. Rules will be bent for people who create that space. You see special exceptions everywhere to rules like that. And often it's just because there, were, there was one individual or a certain group of individuals who just really was honed in on this one thing. And so they, they just were like, okay, like, whatever. We'll break the rules for you this time. A course for the Northern Water Tribe. So we're going to get another war episode. Lots of warring 
Season 1 is ending with, like, huge battles. Alright, so that's the end of these two episodes. Really great moments of writing. Also, I feel like the humor's getting better. It's getting funnier. I'm laughing more at the show. So we only have one more episode for Season 1. I'll see you then.